How you doing? Happy Pork Fest, Jay. Biker Bill, my friend Jay. How's it going so far? Hi, Jay. Yeah, very well. So far, we're here for the day. I'll come be coming back tomorrow and stay over, maybe. You can guarantee me no rain. It's fitting. No, that's I. That's it's 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 yeah, it is actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I just need to find where I put it. That's the driver. This is off. No, I don't. Where is Mark? I need a, I actually got a reboot. I actually brought it in case, uh, in case somebody wanted to look at, say, porkmanor.com. It's a portable kiosk. Welcome to Pork 911. If this is a real emergency, hang up, dumbass. Call 911. If you need a posse, press 1. If you need media attention, press 2. If you would like a Ridley report, press three. If you'd like to be patched into a nationally syndicated radio talk show, live, press four. <laughs> Good stuff. Needs to get a badge that says Spartacus. <laughs> Good to meet you, John. Nice to meet you. Yes. Running for Congress? In yeah, the first district? unfortunately I'm in Nashville, so I can't vote for you. But you can talk it up. Yeah. You can you can tell people that we're for a limited government, no spending, and which is the right place to start be talking about that. So yeah. I mean, it's important that we we're able to control the level of un, unnecessary and unreasonable spending in Washington. I was hanging out with the punkers, and they were always the anti-war people, but they were all socialists economically, and I'm like, I, I can't hang out with these people. So now I found the right niche, the right people, you know? And their philosophy is consistent, you know? So, it's cool. I mean, I'm not as, I'm not as anti-war as a lot of people are, uh, a lot of libertarians are, yeah. but it was just listening to Ron Paul, it, it made sense. And what, what, uh, what kind of flicked the light bulb on for me was when I was... Um, after Hurricane Katrina and the gun confiscations, oh yeah, that really scared me big right. time. And I was I, I and it was just I Kansas, realized Kansas tornado, they did the Kansas same tornado, thing. yeah, really. And yeah. Uh, and that's when that. I realized yeah. we are we're exporting our freedom, yeah. we're, supposedly to people who don't really want it. And that's what kind of scared me to realize, you know, I, you know, freedom around the world was all great and stuff, but I, I really want to make sure we have it here. Right it's, it's impossible you know. to export freedom. You have you only, well, you can you can't do it forcefully. That's for sure. An ideology can only travel voluntarily. I mean, because yeah. you can conquer a country with twenty five thousand troops, but it's not like risk where it just starts producing troops for you. At that point, you need to you know two hundred fifty thousand to hold it. So there's just there's no way you can do it by force. And yeah. then they, they hate you and they hate what you stand for when you do that at, the, at, at that point too. And that was another thing is I supported the Iraq War. I was a big supporter of the Iraq War when it started. And um, and then I realized, well, everything that I expected to happen will just didn't happen. I expected them to be like, wow, freedom, Westernism, we love this stuff. Well, they don't. And then it, it kind of hit me. It's like, well, maybe they're different than me. Maybe. You know, and, well, maybe that's not what we gave them. We gave them checkpoints, and we gave them bombs, and we gave them, you know, death right. and destruction. So yeah. that's hardly freedom, you know? 
Saddam Hussein's checkpoints were replaced by U.S. military checkpoints. Yeah. And, and worse. You know, I think worse. we'd rather have, and so much of it's cultural, we'd rather have a tyrant who is our own ethnicity than some foreign tyrant from some culture around the world. You, you know, it's funny, um, I got this book of Reagan's speeches that he collected or, you know, and he wrote introductions for them. And uh, my mom was sort of pro going into Iraq at first. I was like, Mom, look, it's all because of our association in the Middle East. You look at the flanks of bin Laden, what he used to recruit people. It had nothing to do with our culture. It had to do with defending their holy land against the, the encroaching, you know, great Satan, little Satan. And I was like, if you look at Reagan, when they blew up the, the, the barracks in Beirut, and the introduction, he said, and I've, I said it on the show, you might have heard it, so I don't want to, like, make it tired, but he said, you know, sending those boys into that hellhole is the biggest mistake of my presidency. I mean, what else do you need to know? And, and all these people are like, what would Reagan do? Like, the Heritage Foundation has this massive campaign on the radio. They're, they're on, you know, Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram and all these other things. They, what would Reagan do? You know what? I think Reagan would have smartened up, and he would have saved some freaking cash, and he would have conformed to the Constitution, not had an undeclared war, and got us out of there, because he realized he made a mistake. So, I mean, I don't know. He, he could have... One thing I always talk to my conservative friends, and I know this, you know, conservatives are pro-gun, and they understand the idea of resistance against tyranny, at least some of them do. And um, I tell them, you know, I don't know what you know you think we're accomplishing in Iraq or whatever and I, I don't know what your feelings are on it but I know one thing and that is if there's an Iraqi soldier in my country I'd be shooting at him and there's no question in my mind I don't know if that I don't think that makes me a terrorist I think that makes me a patriot I'm oh, oh, sorry Wait, keep me man that's okay all right I, I just got so pissed off when they had that Supreme Court ruling, right? And Antonin Scalia, there are two things, and I've talked about this on the show too, so if you heard it, just let me know, but Scalia has a son who's in the military. Before any of these cases came up, he said, I'll be damned if I give those guys habeas corpus. My son is in the military. I didn't see him getting off the bench and recusing himself from these cases. Like. I, it was like the most fundamental precept of jurisprudence. And, and Antonin Scalia, who's usually pretty good on the Constitution, and I don't even think the Constitution, I'm an anarchist, so I don't even think the Constitution goes far enough. But he's there to uphold the Constitution, and he doesn't care about recusing himself. And then he says, we're at war. He goes, he goes, never before in the history of this country have we afforded habeas corpus, constitutional habeas corpus rights to alien enemy combatants during a time of war. I'm like, well, guess what? We're not at war, and alien enemy combatants didn't exist before we started going into these unfrigging declared military operations. They would be called prisoners of war, and they would be held according to the Geneva Accords. But since they didn't call for a war, they're in this amorphous weird zone because they don't want to try them under US code. Because if they had to have habeas corpus hearings, then all the CIA information would come out. They'd have to have evidence. They'd have to have evidence. They'd have to put evidence out. Exactly. That's the last thing they want to do. Exactly. Because then we'll see how flimsy it is. Exactly. And other than voting rights, the Constitution talks about people and citizens. Right. I didn't even think about that. What really scared me is, look, you stupid fool. Half of these guys are armed. Shut the fuck up. I got it so cool. That's not a... That's not a good one. So, um, so, 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 so